Nate, the contingency reserve, have placed Canada on the brink of a deficit. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. First of all, Mr. Speaker, I have to I have to express a little bit of disappointment when some in the opposition oppose even a broad statement of principle. I think that really speaks to just opposing for the sake of opposing. Right. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the when it comes to the uh, auto sector, the Minister of Industry is in the United States now. We're obviously uh, watching what they're doing with great interest. Uh, in the end, of course, Mr. Speaker, uh, Canada will take its own decisions. Those decisions will be in the best interest not just of the auto sector, but of the entire Canadian economy and, of course, Canadian taxpayers. Honourable Member for Toronto, Danforth. Is recognized as one of the best in the world by the OECD, and the EU has a similar system. Rather than use phony excuses to modify a system that works well, why can't the minister admit that the real reason is that he's trying to concentrate in Toronto any remaining financial autonomy for Quebec and the provinces, the Honourable Minister? Any, any uh, new system would respect regional uh, differences in, in, in Canada. But let me say this. In the course of the past year, we have had to deal with the non-bank-backed, asset-backed commercial paper issue. It is not yet finalized. This is a serious issue involving 32 or 33 billion dollars of Canadians' money. The regulation was the responsibility largely of the provinces and the territories, not the Government of Canada. But who gets called upon in crises is the Government of Canada to deal with these issues on behalf of Canadians. This is a gap in our system of regulation that the crisis that we're going through points out it is necessary to fill. Mr. Speaker, our government understands that these are difficult times for the forestry industry, workers in affected communities from coast to coast. As noted in the speech from the throne, we're taking steps to ensure the long-term competitiveness of this sector. We're investing in innovation. We're expanding market opportunities. And we've created the Forest Sector Council. We know the challenges are great, Mr. Speaker. That's why we've taken such decisive action. Honourable Member for what I wrote concerning the economies of the G8. Of all the leaders, only our Prime Minister is able to point to a popular and successful record in office. The Canadian Tories are a model of how to behave during a downturn. If the rest of the world had comported itself with similar modesty and prudence, we might not be in this mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, the current market crisis has shown the importance of prudent financial regulations. While Canada's banking sector has been assessed as the world's strongest, our securities framework has been criticized by investors, businesses and international institutions as fragmented, cumbersome and ineffective. In the words of the IMF, Canada is currently the only G7 nation without a common securities regulator and Canada's investors deserve better. Will the Minister of Finance explain what our government is prepared to do to address this situation? Honourable Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, while, while Canada's financial system is the soundest in the world, the, the credit crisis, the financial crisis certainly since last year, has demonstrated one glaring deficiency in our, in our system of regulation in Canada, and that is the absence of a national securities uh, regulator. And this is not an academic subject. This matters to seniors, to people with investments, mutual funds, to families, to Canadians from coast to coast to coast. So we are going to move forward toward a common, toward a national securities regulator for Canada with willing partners in the provinces and willing participants. The Honourable Rosemont Le Petit, a Quebec consensus to, to have uh, the reference year uh, not be 2006 but 1997. It is an ideological, ideological choice by the Conservatives which is hurting manufacturers. The only goal is to please the big oil patch. Is that not the case? I was horrified to learn yesterday of the government's plans to destroy the very foundation of federal environmental protection. At the same time...